the next question assalamu alaikum i am harun rashid from kashmir is it permissible to be a student of a non muslim teacher as far as worldly knowledge is concerned knowledge can broadly be classified into two categories the first is the islamic knowledge the second is the worldly knowledge as far as islamic knowledge is concerned can it be acquired from a non muslim teacher islamic knowledge should only be acquired from a muslim teacher islamic knowledge should not be acquired from a non muslim teacher as far as knowledge of the deen is concerned we should only acquire it from a muslim teacher and we find that it is very prevalent in today's time that there are non muslim teachers who teach islam to muslim students unfortunately so when we are acquiring knowledge we should islamic knowledge we should only acquire it from muslim teachers and we find in the western countries it is very prevalent when students they are doing their masters and their phd their guide many a times is a non muslim how can you have a guide as a non muslim when you are studying islam and many people you know they justify and they say no no this person is just my guide what is the harm if you have a non muslim as your guide as far as islamic knowledge is concerned you never know it may have a huge impact on you and we find this that those students who have passed from universities islamic universities like the madina university like imam muhammad bin saud islamic university they do their bachelors from these islamic universities and later on they do their masters and their phd in the western countries and their guide is a non muslim and we can see and we see the drastic change as far as them practicing islam is concerned they tend to compromise as far as islam is concerned their views change and they become more lenient as far as practicing islam is concerned certain people we see that they study from madina university and while they are studying in madina university they are so righteous and so religious and immediately after they pass them from madina university and after they do their bachelors they are so religious and righteous and they are so good and practicing muslims but unfortunately when they go to the western countries and they do their masters and their phd under a non muslim guide we see their views change and i would like to give you an example if you are writing a thesis on islamic banking and there is a sub topic in islamic banking regarding interest and you are mentioning regarding taking a loan from a conventional bank for your house a home loan or taking an educational loan now if your guide is a non muslim he may tell you that it is okay with you taking a home loan from a conventional bank that is ba based on interest an interest based loan because it is a requirement you require a home many people they even justify and they say that as far as education is concerned you can take an interest based loan unfortunately islam is crystal clear and allah subhanahu wa taala clearly says in the glorious quran that the one who deals in riba it is as if he is waging a war with allah and his messenger but yet people they try to justify and they find ways in order to make something that is haram into halal and they say that this is a requirement unfortunately so that's the reason when we are acquiring islamic knowledge we should see to it that we acquire it from a muslim teacher even if it be a thesis yet we should see to it that we choose a guide who is a muslim and what is the need for choosing a guide who is a non muslim a non muslim who is a guide he is the one 
who is going to guide you as far as tafsir is concerned. He is the one who is going to guide you as far as hadith is concerned. It does not make it. It is not in accordance to the glorious Quran and the teachings of Abdullah Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings be upon him. So this is as far as Islamic knowledge is concerned. The second type of knowledge, it is the worldly knowledge. As far as worldly knowledge is concerned, those can be acquired from a non-Muslim teacher. Those students who are very young and those who are studying in school in the primary and pre-primary section, section, for example, in nursery, junior kg, senior kg, etc. They should not acquire knowledge from a non-Muslim teacher. And why do I say this? Because when a child is young, he cannot decipher between right and wrong. For example, a child is five years, six years, etc. And the teacher may say certain things which may go against the teachings of Islam. And when a child is very young, when he's studying in school, for him, his teacher is the ultimate. His teacher is next to God. Whatever his teacher tells him, the student follows it blindly. So that's the reason if the child is very young, we should see to it that this child does not study even worldly knowledge under a non-Muslim teacher. Because for example, the teacher may say certain things which may go against the teachings of Islam. For example, the teacher may say that interest is very good for the society and the student may not realize. As far as those students who have crossed the age of puberty, for example, they are 12 years, 13 years, 14 years, 15 years, etc. They are in grade 6, 7, 8, etc. Even for these students, it is better that they study worldly knowledge under a Muslim teacher. But if they are confident as far as their deen, as far as their religion is concerned, then they may study worldly knowledge under a non-Muslim teacher. But they should see to it that the teacher is not misguiding them and is not teaching anything against the glorious Quran or authentic teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon. But I would like to emphasize and say that even for these students, it is best that they study Islam under, a, they study worldly knowledge under a Muslim teacher. Now, as far as those students who are in college and in universities, can they acquire worldly knowledge from a non-Muslim teacher? The best for those students who are in college and in universities is that they acquire worldly knowledge from a Muslim teacher. But if they are strong as far as the deen is concerned and if they are steadfast on the religion of Islam and if the teacher is not misguiding them and not teaching anything that goes against the glorious Quran and authentic teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, then these, then a student who is in college or in a university can study worldly knowledge under a non-Muslim teacher. But yet the best is to study worldly knowledge under a Muslim teacher and for those students who are in the pre-primary or primary section they cannot decipher between right and wrong so if for example if there is a female teacher who wears skirts who wears a skirt and teaches the students so the students the female students they may be influenced by the dressing of the teacher and even they will want to wear skirt they will also want to wear skirts. So many a times we think that, oh, it is okay. It is just worldly knowledge. But we do not realize the impact that it has on students who are young, especially on students who study in the primary and pre-primary section. So as far as worldly knowledge is concerned, the best is that it be acquired from a Muslim teacher. And Abdullah Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli Muslim. Seeking knowledge, it is obligatory upon every single Muslim. So we should acquire education and knowledge. And we should try to admit our children into good Islamic schools. Schools wherein there is proper segregation of the genders. Males have a separate premise and the females have a separate premise. So I hope that answers your question.